grade teachers, welcome to our first activity, our first hands-on investigation. I think I need to get my lab coat on. So now that we got that done, let's go ahead and explain this. This activity is about how the temperature of water affects the rate that molecules are moving at. And while you can't see the actual molecules movement, you can actually visualize it using food coloring and some water. So I have two beakers of water. One is just at room temperature. The other one I've been heating on a hot plate. You don't necessarily have to have a hot plate for this. Uh, this school just doesn't have running hot water. So I needed to borrow that to do this demonstration. So all we're gonna do, um, you can have thermometers. These are the thermometers that come in your kits. I also just, since I'm at a high school, any thermometer works. Just make sure that you're reading in the same temperature gauge. So this one says I am at 14 degrees Celsius. And this one says that I'm at 45. So significantly hotter over here. And I am going to go ahead and remove my thermometer so that they're not interfering with the investigation. But you want to have that um, so that you can um, collect the data. So students are going to make their prediction and then they need to fill out what's my temperature of beaker one, beaker two, and we'll do this trial a couple of times. And all that we need to do, this is why this could be done as a demonstration, is do two drops of food coloring in each beaker. And I would have a student help. That was three, so I'll do one, two, three. That was four, just for consistency. They're gonna wanna, as soon as you get your drops in, have the students start a timer. These come in your kits, so you'll need at least two for each set that you're working with, and have them click the start button to start timing. <coughs> start timing and then they're gonna stop the timer and document how much time did it take for the food coloring to disperse and so we're just gonna watch those and you probably can't see much of it <clears throat> from the camera but you're just gonna wait and they kind of measure once the students decide that a certain beaker is done and then you can mark that time it may be useful to um, if you can get ice water to have this at a colder ice temperature um, but even without that I can see that this is dispersing a little bit quicker than this one this they all it kind of seems stagnant whereas this is starting to fill out a lot more so hopefully as long as you have a good enough temperature difference you should notice a change I would just make sure that in before you run this with the students you test it out at the temperatures you can achieve and see if it's noticeable so students will document that and then you'll do a second round. You're supposed to change um, how many food drop colorings, but really this is just to get multiple data points so that way you can confirm that there is something going on there. And then students reflect. So very short, easy act activity, but one that can engage the students in observations, analyzing, discussions, and those sorts of things. I don't think my hot plate was getting as hot as I thought. Um, but that should be a great lab for you guys to kick off your year. Um, and I'm excited to help you out through that. So I will see you guys in the next video.